Welcome to the Red Bay Tigers football coaches show with Tigers head coach Heath Childers and your host Jack Ivey. Hello again and welcome into the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show for another season. I'm Jack Ivey, going to be joined with Coach Heath Childers in just a minute. We're going to be talking, of course, about the great start of the season down in Hamilton Friday night. 54-27 was the score as the Red Bay Tigers came out on top. Uh, big week, of course, this week, of course, would be in Labor Day. And, of course, uh, I know the coaches hadn't uh, uh, missed a drop getting ready for a big team coming up Friday night. We'll be on the road in Lexington, Alabama Friday night, and we're looking forward to having a big crowd in Lexington like we had in Hamilton. And I know Coach will be talking about that in a minute. Uh, you Tiger fans came out in uh, big numbers Friday night down in Hamilton. Once again, the Red Bay Tigers win it 54-27. Welcome to the Coaches Show. Brought to you by Congressman Robert Adderholt, also Mr. John Cook at Alpha Insurance, and also Brad Bolton, and all the folks at Community Spirit Bank. We're going to bring in the head coach right now, and he is Coach Heath Childers. Coach, good to see you. Good to see you, Jack. Coach actually came in pretty quiet this morning and smiling, and uh, Coach, I know when you come in smiling on a normally a Monday morning, this time a Tuesday morning, that means uh, a pretty good Friday night. It was. It was a, it was a real good Friday night. Uh, Kids played hard, we executed well, we got out of there with a win. You weren't as exactly pleased in the first half. We made some mistakes there, but uh, made some good corrections at halftime and, uh, and uh, come out to a big win. What did you all do at halftime to tweak it a little bit? Well, the main thing we discussed, you know, was just correct technique, proper technique, pad level, things of that nature, and ball security. You mentioned about our defense when we were kind of getting pushed back a little bit, being up a little bit too high. For the folks out there watching, Coach is going to tell you uh, what was the problem there. Well, I mean, the biggest problem is we got tired. And once players get tired and uh, get a little winded, their technique goes, starts getting a little slack, a little slack, a little sketchy to say the least. And pads start getting high and you start getting pushed off the ball. But, you know, we, we were able to get that corrected in the, at halftime and the kids did a good job in the second half. Of course, uh, the crowd Friday night, you gotta, you got to brag on these Tiger fans. They come out in big numbers down in Hamilton. Yes, they did. It was, a, it, was, it, was, it was great to see, you know, the support that our football team, cheerleaders, and band received from the community. Of course, i got a question for you. You know, not getting to play that first Friday night and kind of not knowing until the last minute that because of the water situation, uh, how did that affect you uh, getting those extra days? Was that a plus, I guess? It was a plus. I mean, it's always a plus to get a few extra days of practice in, a few, few more days of prep. So uh, we took advantage of it, and uh, it showed. Of course, playing on a Thursday, that uh, will give you a little extra time to get ready for Lexington. But you had a holiday in there. What was the schedule over the weekend for the guys? Uh, the players, we brought them in on Sunday. They worked out. Uh, excuse me. And after we worked out, they we began to put in their game plan. We had our game plan ready to go. We. We uh, we built it on Friday and Saturday, and when the kids come in Sunday, we were ready to start implementing it. Ready to go. Coach, uh, this year, of course, uh, another year. Uh, let's talk about your staff before we get into some highlights. Uh, you got a few changes in the staff. You want to go over the Tiger staff for this season? Uh, you know, pretty much the same staff as, as we've had. We've added a, another guy, Randy Lowry. He helps us out with their passing game. Uh, uh, coaches receivers and does a good job, but you know, outside of that, you know, the Staples got Jamie Purser, you know, d defensive coordinator, Joe Boyd, defensive line coach, wing back coach, Jason Benson, running backs coach, Kelby Hallmark coaches of quarterbacks, uh, coach Taylor Hamilton helps me with the offensive line, and Adam Hester helps me with the defensive secondary. So, uh, uh, got, a, got a good group of guys that work hard. Of course, I'm going to give credit to one other guy. I saw the guy up there with a the camera Friday night. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hugh Johnston. Is that right? Hugh Johnston. He 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 stepped in and filmed the game for us, and that's uh, you know, he's he's always ready to go. All we got to do is ask. Sounds good. And of course, uh, the Hester man's also keeping some stats too, isn't he? So, he is. He does a good job with that. So uh, we've actually got uh, some of his work right here, and of course. Uh, Keith didn't get to come uh, Thursday night because he went down to, he had already promised Curdy to come down to uh, the Sanford game, but we had the world famous uh, uh, David Leatherwood filling in. David does a great job for us, but uh, Keith says he'll be back Friday night. Okay. Uh, normally, if somebody lays out of a practice with, whether it's really a good excuse or not, uh, normally there's some type of punishment. Should we suspend 
Keith, at maybe at least a pregame or a quarter? Or? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's something we it need just, to doesn't feel right a lot of times if Keith is not on their sideline helping us out and correcting us and all that good He'll stuff. He'll coach you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you always got to have him helping us out coaching. He watched uh, Friday night uh, or Thursday night some. I don't know how he was watching our game and watching. I think the Sanford game was out of hand, so he was watching us. Thanks to Miss Janet because, you know, Keith couldn't have found it anyway. So no, probably He had not. to have her to find it. So, once again, uh, I know Keith was excited. 54-27. And, folks, thank you for watching. Uh, I think we had over 6,000 people watching just on Facebook. That's good. That's pretty good. awesome numbers. And uh, just shy of 1,000 on YouTube. So uh, the folks are, are coming to the games, they're watching. Of course, some of these folks watched it on a replay. So remember, we want you to be in Lexington Friday night, uh, tip off 7 o'clock. And of course, if you'll be there, I know Coach and the team will be very happy. Coach, we've got uh, some highlights. I could I could have got you probably an hour's worth of highlights at least, but we're going to go to those highlights now. Once again, we're going to take you down to Hamilton, Alabama, and we're about to toss that old coin there, Coach. Yeah, they want to toss. I mean, we, we wanted the football uh, if we'd won the toss, but it didn't work out that way. I'm going to have to talk to the guys about just exactly what, what side of the coin they're choosing. Right. Tigers coming their way out. Don't forget the Coaches Show brought to you by Congressman Robert Adderho. John Cook at Alpha Insurance who brings the replays and also Community Spirit Bank. And uh, Tigers kicking off. I promised them I would ask you on the Coaches Shows, was that a mistake or did we kick it on side to start? Uh, you know, we sometimes we struggle making good contact with the ball in the kickoff. So, uh, uh, I, I think that was an accident. That was an accident, okay. I mean, but, I could sit here in line and say we planned that, but I don't. we did not. Well, I told him that you'd tell me the truth, so that was not a, an onside kick to start the game. No, that, that was planned, you know, coming out with a hard count right out, right right. out of the gate, get five yards, uh, you know, then, you know, we – we just, you know, first two snaps, we put the ball on the ground. You know, we can't do that. Uh, you know, nobody intends on putting the ball on the ground. We just, we got to do a better job of ball security. We, you know, we can't get started. We can't start the game Friday night, this Friday night, like we did last Thursday. That's uh, normally pretty hard to overcome. It is, it is. Especially given the ball at uh, basically midfield. Midfield. Coach, I was impressed with their quarterback, uh, especially on his rollout. Uh, he made good decisions. Uh, if it wasn't there, he'd throw it away. And uh, also, they had some uh, tough running backs as well. They did. They, 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 you know, they're doing a good job over there. Uh, they're, they're, they're young in some spots. Uh, so that was a good, good play right there by, by Inman coming up, stopping the bubble. Uh, Good job there. That's that's when our defensive line was still fresh, you know. Uh, they made it pretty tough on Hamilton in the beginning to run the football. Tigers going to let it go. It hit off the back of a Hamilton player, and we'll see where they place it at. The Red Bay Tigers. The Tigers going to get it, and judgment from the wing T. The quick handoff again. This time to the 35. We're going to. Get to the 36. You mentioned about putting it on the ground a couple of times. Here's the second time, and boy, they get the ball in great field, field yes. position here. And uh, how we didn't uh, get behind early, I don't know. But uh, well, we played we, we played pretty good defense until we got tired, and then once we, we got tired, it and that's going to happen first game. Right. Uh, but, you know, we got to do a better job of ball security and all that good stuff. Red Bay Tiger football, a production of Ivy Coach, I don't know uh, how many people you'd have to select for players of the game if we did that, but uh, tell you what, Holden Inman, did he have a game? He had a good game. Of course, I thought Gage uh, had a good game, good decisions at quarterback as the Tigers you know, playing some defense here. You know, when you, when you score 54 points, everybody's done a good job offensively. Oh, yeah. So uh, the kids did a good job, you know. What a play here. Good pass, good catch, good run after the catch. Uh, we like that matchup out there, you know, so uh, we took a shot at it and it paid off.
to tell you what Edgman can do. I mean, not Edgman, Edgman can throw it. What about Edgman? Did he go up? There he is, folks, number 22, and, uh, of course, Jackson Vinson. What a night he had for the sophomore running back. And, uh, he, yeah, we're, we're going to get him going here in just a second. We'll take another look at that on the Alpha Insurance replay. I wouldn't want to be out there trying to defend uh, holding Inman one-on-one -on -one if I was the opposing team, would you? No, I wouldn't either. You know, we, the best we could tell from our previous two snaps that we, we were getting, we were going to get single coverage out there. So, you know, we took advantage of it. And, Jack Ivey along with Coach Heath Childers live here in the studio with the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show. And they're getting the ball excellent field position again right here just short of midfield. Tigers up eight to nothing. Hamilton, Alabama, number two, Mason Holloway, the quarterback in the shotgun. A little swing pass to the left. Tigers are there. It is I'm not sure if that the wasn't a lateral there. I, that's what it looked like to me, but that was almost a I don't guess it was because they didn't call it. Left to right. well, we hadn't got a strike for sure, so, the quarterback. Quarterback has to so we can't officially to call it. Room out front. He's at the 50, 45, down to the 40. He's got a first down at the 35. Keith would have probably called that. Uh, probably so. Coach will let him get away here. and uh, Yeah, we had him in the third and ten and let him scramble. We're going you know, to have to tweak some things as far as uh, keeping the quarterback in the, in the pocket and not, not letting him scramble. <laughs> Great job there defensively by the Tigers. Uh, Mr. Ferris, Eli, you know, he, he had a good night uh, on the perimeter. So, that was a good play by him. He's going to be short of the first down. Folks, 5 6, 22 26 is the number there in Red Bay. You can order off the menu anytime except Sunday, and they're going to sack us. Rough start here for, you know, first down. You know, we. We saw something in their secondary. We, you know, we thought we could hit another big play, and, and the pass protection broke down. Of course, that shows you right there that offensive line. If, if they have a little mistake, what happens? Quarterback goes down, and of course, we, we, overall, we did a good job giving him coverage the other night or time to throw the football. A good run there by Brady Bolton. And twitch. Third down and eight to go from their own line. back. Plenty of time. No third down here. We, you know, we tried to hit the curl. And a uh, little miscommunication there between the quarterback and, and the receiver. We're still up eight nothing, and uh, you know the biggest part of the first half was played. Yeah, on our end of the field. Yeah, we give them good field position the whole game. You know, hopefully we'll have that fixed by Friday night. Of course, we move the play along and show their first score of the game. They make it an eight-six ball game here. Again, this is a. Uh, the highlights of the Red Bay Hamilton game Friday night, live in Hamilton. Young man is Kevin McBride. Young man getting into the end zone for touchdown. I thought we almost held him up. They're going to go for two here. And he goes to the right well, that's side and it's able to the same play again for some reason. But uh, that's my first mistake. Yes, first one of the season. And that will make it a eight six. They're going to go for two right here. They're going for the two-point conversion. It and is number 24, you had a good night cut, cutting it back in for the two-point conversion. So right to left, it is Hamilton kicking off. Hamilton kicking it off. To your Red Bay Tigers. Hopefully you like in the instant. Coach, we had a lot of big plays in the ball game. I was looking at the stats. Uh, you realize that we had six first downs, and they had 16, but uh, total yardage, we had 463, and they had uh, 331. They had a little. Here's the kickoff, and I'll show you the return. Miss out there on the kickoff. Uh, got the flag, or they got a timeout, I guess. There you see him at the 40. A good return here by Holden. 50 and turns your afterburners on, and he just pulls away from the guys. From Is this the one they brought back? Yes, the we, we had a block in the back. back. What a return there. So. Or they're available any time for funeral orders. So they bring that one back, we'll do you right. and, and we're going to start so off. happy to have them on our all-sports package. With a run game right here. 
up to about the 29 yard line. Number 34, Vince. They played really you know, we well were, tonight on you know, the varsity setting it up and doing their job. We were able to just kind of, you know, get back to down, what we do. And, uh, get up to about the 33. They're going to be awful close to the first down. I believe we would appreciate it. Red Bay's got a first down about their own 35 yard line. Take control right of the line side. of scrimmage and, and that is Vincent, you know, so. That's a pretty good sized man, isn't it? He is. He's, he's, a, he's a good sized kid. Keep improving. No doubt. I didn't know exactly how much speed he had, but uh, he's showing pretty good speed right there, Coach. He sure is. He moves well. The Red Bay Tigers will have first down and 10 to go. Let's take a quick look at that. I heard somebody say, I probably shouldn't say this on air, he had a lot more speed than his dad. <laughs> probably now for sure, but uh, I don't know how much speed his dad had during the days, but his dad was a good ball player. His dad was a good football player. He had numbers, he wanted to get his dad's old number. Quarterback under center, inside the 15. Quick handoff. I know one thing, he was ready for the football every time he was ready to hand it to him. And he uh, carried it 23 times in the game, averaged uh, right at 10 yards a carry and for 234 yards. We're talking about Jackson Vinson for the Red Bay Tigers. And I believe we get into the end zone. I think, you know, we went four plays there, went 70 yards. You like my little thing that said touchdown coming up there? That looks good. Once he got forward movement, he drove. So the Tigers will be going for two, holding Inman over to the right. Tigers, of course, always go for two. A little bit of help kind of easing over his way. And uh, we're going to run this football in there. And in there for the two-point conversion, we go up, uh, I believe, 16 to eight at this time. I told you earlier we could have had enough highlights to do a long time, but. Uh, so we're going to pick their play up and showing you where they score here. The personal foul. No, it was out here on the right side, over here on the wrist, right on about the hash marks. 16 to 14. That'll make it a 16 to 14 score. Today's coaches show brought to you by Community Spirit Bank, John Cook at Alpha Insurance, who also brings the replays. Community Spirit Bank, our first downs, and Congressman Robert Adderholt here on the coaches show. Hand off to the right side. And is he? We're able to hold him out there. And uh, keep it at a 16 14 game. Doja Backo work by Dr. Brad Gentleman at Shoals Primary Care, 256 383. Don't forget you can watch the replay of the game again tonight. Of course, you can go on YouTube and watch it anytime you like. And go back to Facebook on the feed there. And another great return by the Red Bay Tigers. Coach, take it away. Uh, that's holding Inman again, doing a great job. Uh, returning the ball. I mean, as you pointed out earlier, he had a really good game. Also, the guy's doing a great job blocking for him. Uh, Keith in there probably likes this return. You know, you got, you, you see, you got people downfield running, trying to set blocks up for him. So, uh, you know, just a, just a really good team effort on those returns. In Red Bay. Big shout out to Neighbors Clinic. Thank you, Dr. Jim and Stephen Neighbors. Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show. Jack Ivey and Coach Heath Childers here. Don't forget, uh, Coaches Show will be on normally on Monday nights and a few other times throughout the week, but this week it's going to be on Tuesday night because of the holiday. Under center, Gage Edgman. We're going to go to Jackson Vincent again at the just a Just a great push there by the offensive line. First down. Good job running. So, Coach, you mentioned those offensive linemen there. Tell everybody who's making those good blocks up front. Uh, you, number five, Kyler Watson, he's our tight end. Uh, number 58, Red Lockhart's our right tackle. 56, Will West is a right guard. 64, Jack West is a center. Uh, 50, Caden Blanche is the left guard. And 60, Reed Hamilton's the left tackle. You know they're doing a good job. The the, the wings and the slots. They when they when they don't have the ball, which is Brady Bolton and Cody Corns and Noah Hester, they they do a great job blocking. So you know you, just a great first half and a coach. Uh, we let them score and then we get a, a late score in that half too. Uh, that was big. 
uh, they got us back up, what, by 10? By, by 10. And uh, so a great first half. Of course, the Red Bay Tiger marching band performed at halftime, did a great job, as well as the Hamilton band. And of course, they're on the other side from where we are, so you don't get to see them from the front, but uh, we do show the bands. And Coach, uh, the Kirk man himself, the band director, likes to see the band Instead of being up close, he kind of likes to see it out back so he can kind of see if they're marching correctly. And sometimes on a close shot, it's not. So we uh, video it uh, showing the whole band there so you can uh, kind of see what they're doing marching on the field. But they did a good job down in Hamilton and hats off to the, uh, not only the band, but also Miss Hester and, and all the great staff with the cheerleaders. So they put a lot of work into it, don't they, Coach? They do, they do, Mr. Kirk. and does a great job with the band and Miss Hester does a, does a good job with the cheerleaders. I mean, so, uh, and they, they, they both put in a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort to get their groups looking as good as they do. One good thing about it that I heard Miss Hester talk, we interviewed her and uh, as far as the practice, uh, they can at least come inside, they said. So that kind of uh, helped out as far as practice. And Keith, let's take it back in here. Once again, the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show. Once again, the Red Bay Tiger Marching Band playing at halftime. If you don't know which one is Jack Ivey, I'm Jack Ivey, and this is the world-famous Coach Heath Childers. And, uh, Coach, uh, before we uh, move to our game coming up Friday night, uh, let's look at some stats in the game. We ended up with 463 yards uh, total in the game. Uh, they had 331. Uh, they had a couple hundred yards rushing, but we had 363. And, of course, uh, receiving the football, the Tigers had uh, uh, four nice receptions there from, of course, our leading receiver there, Mr. Holden Inman. He had 99 yards uh, receiving in the game for the Tigers. Uh, uh, we didn't throw it a bunch, Coach. We didn't have to. Three out of four because our running game was on. But uh, I guess uh, as far as uh, I don't like to look at negatives, but if you looked at negatives, uh, probably the – uh, the fumbles would be that, but uh, you you got to be pretty pleased with the penalties there, mistakes as far as penalties. We only had four, and they had ten in the game. Well, I was I was when I look back at the stats and stuff, I was definitely pleased with the penalties. We did a great job of limiting their mis dumb mistakes from that aspect. You know, we ball security. We, we got to take care of the football. Uh, also, I, I was a little aggravated. Our, our pass protection broke down once or twice. You know, those are things that we got to get fixed. So, but overall, I was definitely pleased with the effort. Rushing in the game, of course, uh, Jason Vincent had 30, uh, uh, 23 carries for 234 yards. Uh, you know that number 17 out there, Mr. Is that, uh, Cody Carter. Cody Carter. Uh, he's, averaging, what, he's averaging 73, 73 yards. 73 yards a carry. A carry, so Carnes. might want to get the ball to him a little bit more. What do you think? So, Carnes. Uh, I forgot you there for a half a second, but 73-yard uh, average, if you do that Friday night, yeah, that's that'll get you in the game in a hurry, won't it? Might need, to, might need to give him the ball a couple more times. And, of course, uh, number one, uh, you know who that is, uh, Lamphere had uh, five rushes for 43 yards, so good average by Eight him as well. yards carry. So you'll take that, all these stats, you'll take them Friday night, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, on the defensive side, uh, the Red Bay Tigers uh, – Watson had uh, 10 tackles, uh, had a total of 12 tackles. 56, uh, Mr. West had 17 tackles. He was all over the field Friday night. He was. He was. I mean, you know, at times we played good defense. There's other times we didn't. So uh, we just got to be more consistent. Brady Bolton had seven in the game. Uh, Lamphere had five. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Inman had uh, six. Um, 64, that's Jack West had four, looks like uh, number nine, Ferris had five, and who's number 13? I forgot right quick. It's Noah Hester. Noah Hester, the world famous Noah Hester. Uh, Noah had a good game. Uh, he had four tackles in the game. So overall, uh, some pretty good stats for the game. And um, I was looking at our, our punts and stuff. What about our punting game? Are you have you, I'm pleased with he, their punting game. Yeah, he, he did a good job Friday. You know, night. It was, it, here here's the main thing people have to look at when you start looking at special teams. Right. All right. If it, you know, we can't keep giving teams great field position every time we kick off. Right. But at the end of the day, as a coach, if you look back in a ball game, you've give up no kick return for a touchdown. Right. 
You hadn't give up a punt return for a touchdown and the punt hadn't been blocked. That's a pretty good night. You'd probably take that. I'll take that. I'll take that every Friday night. Every Friday night. Every Friday night. As long as we're not giving up kick returns for touchdowns, we're not muffing punts, we're not getting punts blocked or punts ran back, that's a pretty good night special teams wise in high, in high school football. No right. Now, I don't care what the Dallas Cowboys and Pittsburgh Steelers are doing because I don't get paid like their coaches and my players don't get paid like their pay players. Right. So they're going to be a little cleaner on Sundays than high school teams are. Should be. On special, yeah, they should be. They're millionaires. Right. So, but as far as high school ball goes, that we'll, 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 take, we'll take that. No punt returns, no punt blocks, no muff punts. We'll take that. So overall, I thought a, a great start uh, this past Thursday night. Red Bay Tigers coming out on top. Once again, the final score is 54-27. Today's Coaches Show brought to you by Congressman Robert Adderholt. Our Alpha Insurance man, Mr. John Cook, of course, uh, brings the uh, Alpha Insurance replays. And also Community Spirit, Mr. Brad Bolton, the staff, they do the first downs. But uh, Coach, folks like our instant replay. I don't know where I know you've getting to watch all's game film a little bit different, but uh, the instant replays add, add a lot to the game. And uh, I want to say thanks to David uh, for helping me Friday night, uh, Thursday night, Keith was out, but Keith's supposed to be back down in Lexington, Alabama. And speaking of Lexington, Alabama, it's going to be a tough game Friday night, coach. Well, they're a good football team. They're well coached. They got good players. Uh, Lexington has been, been good for the last several years and they're good again this year. They've got, couple of guys that can really run when they get the football in their hand. They've got some guys that flies around on defense making tackles. Uh, good players, and they're well coached. It's going to be a tough ball game. Of course, uh, the boys basketball coach up there, and also he's the assistant principal, uh, Coach David Hill, is a pretty good guy. He takes care of us when we go over there and stuff. So he says he's going to be laying out the red carpet for us uh, Friday night. So I don't know where he's talking about the Jack Ivy crew or – everybody from Red Bay, but uh, so David, I know you'll be watching this and uh, do I need to go ahead and turn my order in for what type of food I want? You need to go ahead and text me and stuff, but coach, uh, I don't take this lightly and you don't take this lightly at well and stuff, but uh, when you go on the road doing games and stuff like that, uh, uh, the folks are uh, very nice to us. That, that, you don't take that lightly. I want to return that favor when they come back to Red Bay and uh, it's always good to go on a, a pleasant road trip, right? It is. And it of always course, is. Coach, uh, Friday night, uh, let's, let's talk about their offense a little bit. Uh, what do they actually run? <clears throat> They're a lot like us. Uh, they're kind of a mirror image of, of, uh, of us. I mean, uh, they like to run the football. They like to be physical up front. They like to take their shots downfield when they have opportunities. Uh, so, uh, as I said, they're well coached. They're, they're big. They're physical. They got some fast guys defensively. You know, they're going to move. They're, they're not going to sit in the same spot two plays in a row. They're going to move guys all over the field. And uh, they do a good job of getting, of coaching those kids up and getting them where they need to be after the ball snapped. You know, so, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough ball game. Of course, we're going to go there uh, prepared to do whatever we do and uh, do what we do best. But uh, I can already tell you that uh, if the Tigers need to throw the football, I think we can throw the football. If we need to run the football, I know we can run it. And uh, what about depth on our ball club this year? Uh, I know. Well, well, it's better. I mean, you know. Jack, we're running around out there with 18 to 20 kids last year. We got right. 32 dressed this year, so the depth's better. I mean, it's uh, – would you always, as a coach, like to have a few more people? Of, of course sure. you would. Uh, but it, it's gotten better, and hopefully it'll continue to get better. But uh, I'm pleased with the guys I've got. You right. Know? So they work hard. They do a good job. They're coachable. Uh, so – uh, depth, but to answer your question, depth, depth is better. How, uh, I guess, I, of course, I probably should know this from watching the game Friday night. How many folks you got uh, having to go both ways? Of course, in two I got several. I got several guys going both ways, a majority. But I've also, this year, unlike last year, I've got some guys that's not going both ways. Right. They can play on one side of the ball, which is, you know, that's, that's good. And I've also got some other guys who can come in and fill in. Right. And sub for some of these guys that's going both ways. So that, that's that's a good thing. No doubt about it. And, of course, uh, y'all have worked hard all summer. And, of course, uh, got delayed a few days. And uh, 
Uh, you didn't get the week off uh, as far as just a whole week off because the game got changed, but uh, it's worked out for the good because the Tigers did get a big win Friday night over the ball club from Hamilton. Let's look just a, I know you don't want to look past Lexington, but uh, as far as the schedule is current, who we got? Uh, have we got Sheffield coming to town after after Lexington? Is that right? Does that sound? Yes, good? after Lexington, I, it would be Sheffield coming to town. So we'll get our first home game a week from Friday night right here at Fred Bostick Junior Memorial Stadium. And uh, coach, you've played on the new field uh, as far as like a jamboree game, but we hadn't played a real game on it. Uh, how is the uh, turf field helped you as far as practice? Do you all practice on that field? We do. We, do. We, we practice some. We don't practice every day. Uh, we still practice on our grass uh, field a, a good bit because most of the games we play, or at least half the games we play, is going to be on grass. Okay. So, uh, But as far as rain coming in, uh, it's really helped out because you know the new field drains really fast. So instead of getting out there and having to try to practice in mud and slop around in it, we can, you know, we can switch gears and go out there on the game field and, and have a good practice. I've been told, I can't tell you where I heard this, that you're kind of disappointed that you're not getting, uh, you guys are not getting to stripe the field each week. Uh, is that? Yeah, I mean, I really miss painting the field. That's what I thought and stuff like that. And also mowing. Mowing, I miss that too. You miss that too and stuff. So. Uh, most people don't have any earthly idea how much it takes uh, labor-wise each week just to keep the field looking good and keep it painted and all that type of stuff. We don't have to worry about that anymore. No. Uh, what's the status on our new scoreboard? Uh, as far as I know, it should be up and operating by the time we play Sheffield. That's going to be awesome. And uh, uh, you know Jack Ivey's excited about the new scoreboard. Yeah, you can see it. I can see it. And, uh, wow. I, I did my best to not to keep it where it was at, but they they overrode. They overrode me. you yeah, to move it yeah. on. So, well, you know, Scott uh, Webster uh, was down at Smithville the other night, and uh, Scott knows how I feel and stuff. Of course, I don't know where he was laid back in a recliner trying to do the game, watching on the monitor. But he couldn't see the scoreboard either at Smithville where he was at, and David had to keep him up. So Scott knows how I feel now about uh, not being able to see the scoreboard. But folks. Uh, uh, I know y'all probably wonder, Jack ain't telling how much time there is. I have to actually get up out of my seat and hang out the window. Uh, that's what I've been doing in the past, but no more. No more. No, no more. more so. And uh, not thanks to you, I guess. Well, no. I mean, you need your exercise. Need my exercise. But we'll have a new scoreboard at the game against Sheffield. But uh, that'll be the first game of the season at Red Bay. <coughs> that'll be a week from this Friday night. And this Friday night, once again, we're going to Lexington, Alabama. And uh, we're excited about going over to try to get win number two. So normally on a Saturday morning, uh, of course, uh, last year she slacked up a little bit. You told, we're talking about Miss Childers here cooking the breakfast for the guys. But uh, she was out of town, and y'all had uh, – did you go out and eat again? Yeah, Dad and I, my brother, we went to Hardy's. So uh, that, well, that's a good thing. Where do you go to Hardy's at now? Hamilton. Hamilton, Alabama. Go to Hamilton. It's a good it, Hardee's. It's a good Hardee's. I, I have a good uh, breakfast. Good. You like breakfast. What did you have? Uh, pork chop and gravy biscuit. Just, just one? No, I always get two. Oh, two. You got to find out. You got to ask more in details on these interviews to find out exactly. Uh, no, what, one biscuit's enough just to make you mad, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it doesn't really do the trick. Well, I went to a ball game Saturday. You know where I went Saturday, and uh, I didn't want to eat. Mississippi State. Absolutely not. Ole Miss. Oh, Miss. Okay, that's right. And uh, that was a, we that did was a, stop and get a gravy. That was a waste of time. I mean. Oh, well, well, I enjoyed it. I always like to win. No. I had a gravy and biscuit on the way down, but only had one because I knew as soon as I get there, I'm going to be eating. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't want to overeat traveling. Uh, I wanted to save that till I got there. So uh, nothing like a Friday night. And, Coach, I'm ready for this Friday night. Once again, Lexington. I'm going to let you uh, brag on those fans one more time that might have joined us. We need them there Friday night, don't we? We do. I mean, we, we, we need a big crowd to show up Friday night. Uh, this is a big game. It's a region game. Uh, they've had our number the last couple of years. Uh, so hopefully, you know, hopefully we can get that change Friday night. Sounds good. Tell the kiddos, the coaches, and all the staff we appreciate them and uh, the great job they do. Uh, Mr. Kurt, uh, Miss Hester, band, uh, cheerleaders, y'all keep it up. Y'all doing a great job. We'll see y'all Friday night as well. And 
we're going to get out of here for Coach Heath Childers and, of course, Keith behind the scenes. Keith Ledbetter, I'm Jack Ivey, saying thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. And once again, appreciate uh, Congressman Robert Adderholt, Alpha Insurance, and also Community Spirit Bank making the Coaches Show possible. Thanks for watching. Please share this. And remember, if you want to go back and watch the game again, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube. And, of course, we'll be replaying it on Channel 12 and 97 as well. For everybody, I'm Jack Ivey saying thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time for the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show. Y'all have a great day. You've been listening to the Red Bay High School Toaster Show with head coach Heath Childers and your host, Jack Ivey.